about robots. Here we go uh, from Lumux. Hi, James. I realize that scaling production of robots is going to be advantage Tesla, but how does figure 03 robot stock up against Optimus? Thank you for your tireless efforts and robots. Hey, James, as always, thank you for everything. Question Optimus V figure 03. Could figure 03 take Optimus market share? Brilliant, brilliant question. Now, I had to dig into uh, robots. I know quite a bit about Optimus figure stuff. I actually painstakingly watched the videos and watched a couple of things that are very, very important. And here I am. I'm not a robot expert. I'm pretty good at finance, but I did notice something that was quite strange. Figure 03, they completely pivoted, right? There was talk, uh, I think in April of this year or before, that they had deployed a fleet of robots to a company called BMW in a place called Spartanburg. I think it's in Virginia, Spartanburg, South Carolina, North Carolina, somewhere like that. Uh, sounds like a German place, but it's not. It's in the US. And they had deployed, apparently, these figure robots, and they were doing end-to-end -end processing. But something happened, because now there's no more talk of industrial commercial use of these robots. They pivoted. Why did Figure 03 pivot? Because now you go to their website. All over their website, it'll say, the future of home help is here. Figure 03, general purpose humanoid robot for every day for home help, help around the house. They got demos of laundry and dishes and vacuuming and delivering drinks and stuff like that, which all look pretty precarious. Now, I did look at the videos and I saw some things that were a little concerning. And of course, this is why Elon Musk says there's three things that are very important to the robot. One, the hand. Two, the brain. And three, the durability of everything together. So... Tesla has the brain, and they've been working on the hand extensively for now, years. But when I looked at the figure three doing dishes, first of all, it opened, it had four fingers and a thumb, but the way it opened the faucet, which was a handle, not a twirly thing, it was like a claw with one finger. So it was very, very unrefined. I wouldn't call it precise, dexterous manipulation. That's complete BS. And then the way it had to pick up the dish to show you how unprecise it is, it literally had to hack, push down one edge of the plate so it would tilt up and then the other hand could kind of grab it. And that's not how humans operate. So they took a bit of a shortcut there and it looks like a bit of a party trick. So the hand is very important, I think. Figure said, we can't figure out the hand. Therefore, it cannot be used in the BMW factories. Therefore, let's pivot. Let's not go head to head against Elon Musk and Tesla. They've got 40 billion in cash and they've got manufacturing at scale and global factories and stuff like that. And the brain, let's pivot to the B2C use case, which is the home. Okay, so here are some of the cons I see and why you shouldn't be worried about figure three eating Optimus's lunch. One, it's not safety certified. Now, and the reason I say this, if you have a robot running around a factory, yeah, it's going to bump into things and may get quashed by a crane or bump into an employee that will have workers' comp. That's all fine. But if you have one of these things running around little children or little dogs or the elderly around the house, it can be quite dangerous. And they're not, as far as I know, safety certified yet. And the hands, they apparently have 16 degrees of freedom, but I didn't see it. I didn't see anywhere near human dexterity. It was like uh, I cut my hand. I remember a long, long time ago, I lost my thumb, and all I had was a big thing on my hand. And literally, my left hand was just like a club. And that reminded me of how <laughs> this guy had to open the faucet. So there we are. Um, now, there's a couple of other things I did notice too. Uh, they have a palm camera, which is helpful for data inclusions. But it's exposed, which you get dirty, messed up, won't be able to see through it, etc. So it's kind of weird putting, you know, does anybody else have a camera on their palm? Any humans you know out there that has that? So that's kind of weird. And then they have this skin. It's kind of like a nice fabric padding. But you know how dirty that's going to get? And waterproof. you got this thing around sinks and dishes and stuff. Outdoor use, it's going to need lots of covers and lots of replacement for the fabric. 
And that will be another pain in the butt. Um, and then runtime. Apparently, it is a five-hour, two-kilowatt battery, which means it'll need to be charged all the time. And that charging takes 30 to 50 minutes. So basically, every five hours, it needs to charge for nearly an hour. And that is a bit of a problem. So it is pretty cool that they have this. I think it could be construed as intelligent that they're pivoting to domestic use because Tesla's not going to be playing in the backyard. And why you don't need to sweat about the humanoid robot from Tesla called Optimus. I believe it'll smoke figure three because nobody beats Tesla at making stuff. Not even the Chinese. Okay. Nobody comes close. And Tesla can amortize actuators and gears and trains and electronics and assembly across massive gigafactories, machines that make the machines, and they have automotive grade suppliers. Uh, they will be able to crush bill of materials and unit costs. You know, if you've ever heard Jeff Lutz talk, he talks about unit cost, unit cost, unit cost all the time. And that's crucial where humanoids are competing against humans for labor hour, the dollar per hour, every cent saved will be massive. And then their data training and infrastructure, Tesla has a very mature vision stack, labeling engines, simulation engines, access to massive perception data sets from cars, et cetera. This will give it a flywheel for autonomy and also learning across. You know, I was imagine that you might want a sushi chef but you just paid for an Optimus security guard or a dog walker. Maybe it'll be an add-on to an app store type of device where you order the sushi capability or the tire changing capability, whatever else. <clears throat> That's going to be something that Tesla will be able to do and others will not be able to do it. Vert vertical integration. Nobody is as vertically integrated as Tesla. They make their own batteries. They make their own seats. They make their own everything. And very importantly, they'll immediately have a big customer not BMW and Spartanburg, they have themselves across gigafactories and they can internally deploy thousands of these units on its lines, on its logistics, in very controlled environments with repeatable tasks 24-7, uh, built-in service teams, accelerating reliability, lowering cost, proving the ROI faster. Uh, and then they can deploy them at partners, suppliers, all that type of stuff. And then they have incredible safety compliance and service network as well, uh, because they do this for cars, which is automotive grade safety. So <laughs> don't worry, the competition are not coming for robots. Uh, let me see what else do I have here. Total addressable market too. I was thinking as well, it's not just, okay, the massive pivot for figure to B2C, and we all know B2B is a lot bigger than B2C. It always has been the case. But here I ran some numbers. And basically, the total addressable market for commercial robots in 2030 will be at least $150 billion. Domestic robots may be at a stretch, $25 billion. But remember, it'll be a luxury item for very rich households. The people that can drop $50,000 a year in one of these things or thirty grand or whatever it is, it's going to be a lot to have a little party trick. You know, show your friends, hey, I'm having cocktails party tonight and my robot will serve you some drinks. Come on over. Yeah, it's cool, but it's yeah, with those hands. Make sure you get some of the red, what are those red cups, the plastic ones that they use outdoor parties. Don't use your fine Italian glassware. So anyway, Tam, 150 billion for commercial robots. That's what Elon Musk is going after. Domestic robots, maybe 25 billion. So it's a fraction. Kager is far lower and the ROI is far less as well. So again, sorry for being long-winded. Figure three, nice trick. It's not going to go anywhere near what Tesla can do. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Take that money to the bank.